A generation of Brits who came here as children have been facing the threat of deportation from the UK. So what? They went to British schools, they worked British jobs, they built British lives. But recently some were denied healthcare, lost jobs, were detained and faced being thrown out of their country. They are the Windrush generations. So what is the Windrush generation? Between 1948 through to the late 60s, more than half a million people came to the UK from the Caribbean. It was the first wave of Commonwealth immigration. They were invited over by the British government to work in public services and help rebuild the country after the Second World War. Where do you come from? Jamaica. Have you brought your children with you? Yes. How many? Five children. Those children who came here are now pensioners. People like Michael Braithwaite, who left Barbados when he was nine. He was told he was illegal after reapplying for his job in a school, a job which he then lost because he couldn't show the right paperwork. Do I belong where I am for what I've been here all this time? And to be uh, put in that position, it sort of made me feel like I'm an alien, basically, or I have no status. Another who has suffered is Hubert Leslie. He came from Jamaica on his mum's passport and found himself out of work as a maintenance man because the Home Office had declared him an illegal immigrant. I feel like an alien in this country. Really? Yeah. Because if I've, if I've worked and lived in this country for a long time and the Home Office would come and look at me and tell me that I've got no status in this country and I've worked and I've paid my tax. So what led to the threats of deportation? It's really important to know that the Windrush generation have been living here legally. Tougher immigration rules were brought in by Theresa May when she was Home Secretary, where in her own words, a hostile environment was created to expel illegal immigrants. Remember those vans? The problem is that a lot of the Windrush generations never applied for a British passport when they arrived here, because back then the kids would have travelled on their parents' passports when they came to this country. When their parents or grandparents passed away, they were then left with no idea of their own. Anthony Bryan came to the UK from Jamaica with his family in 1965. At only seven years old, he arrived on his brother's passport. When he recently tried to apply for his own British passport to visit his mum in Jamaica, he had no proof of ID, so immigration came knocking. They said I'm illegal. Their job is to remove me out of the country. They had a plane ticket for me. And I found my missus and I said to her, they tell me that they got a plane ticket for me and they're going to remove me out of the country. Anthony is actually one of the lucky ones. He recently found out that he's allowed to stay in his country. When immigration rules changed in 1971, anyone from the Windrush generation living in the UK was automatically given indefinite leave to remain. But the Home Office didn't keep a record of those people, and it's estimated more than 50,000 may not have registered their right to live here. So what did they have to do to stay? To prove they're living legally in the country, they were asked to provide at least one document, sometimes more, like a payslip, medical record, bank statement for every year that they've been in the country. That could mean finding a doctor's note from 50 years ago. I mean, would you be able to find one from three years ago, let alone half a century? For most, the UK is the only home they know. Until now, they have never questioned whether they belonged here. These individuals, having been here from childhood, had no sense in their minds that they're not British. And that is really the tragedy of it. So what has been decided? A U-turn was made after Theresa May was urged by at least 140 MPs across Parliament to change this policy. More than 130,000 people signed a petition asking the government to grant the Windrush generation amnesty. Labour's David Lammy made an impassioned speech to the Home Secretary Amber Rudd in the Commons. This is a day of national shame and it has come about because of a hostile environment policy that was begun under her Prime Minister. The UK Immigration Minister, Caroline Noakes, admits that terrible mistakes have been made. These are people who we welcomed here way back in the 50s and 60s and it's really important to me that we correct any error and that we send a message of reassurance 
to people who are here. We want to get this right for them. Theresa May has apologised to Commonwealth leaders for the anxiety caused over the controversy. That's probably a good sign for people here. The only problem is, is that some people might have already been deported. So what happens next? A Windrush task force has now been set up by the Home Secretary Amber Rudd to address the situation. But the Home Office has stressed the importance of a robust immigration policy to root out those who actually are here illegally. Given the attention this story has got, it's likely the government will find a solution to this issue. But for the Windrush generation, will it really make up for the way that many of their lives were turned upside down? Some people reckon this is a possible glimpse into what could happen after Britain leaves the European Union. Now obviously the status of migrants from Europe is a totally different situation to the Windrush generation. But this whole thing has raised questions and concerns over how the Home Office will cope with the changes to the immigration system. I guess we'll just have to wait and see.